Hi everybody, my name is Kaylee and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I literally feel like I am sick 24-7. Like, do you guys hear my voice? Like, I think that I need to go to the doctors because I literally don't think there's been a video within the past like four months where I've actually have not been sick. Anyways, without further ado, I'm going to bring you guys up close. There we go. Okay, everybody, do not mind my skin. I am having an immense amount of breakouts right now. And yeah, I'm just like hoping that when this week is over, like uh, hopefully next week is better. That's all. Okay, so for everybody who is new here, I'm going to go through my quick usual little rundown. For most of the video, I'll be looking in this direction because my mirror's over here and I would like to see what I'm doing. I do tell these story times in a first person point of view. So if you don't like that, then you can leave. You can pack your things and leave. There's the door. There's the door! and these story times are sent in by anonymous people okay okay story time about how i slept with my best friend's boyfriend and it was the best thing that ever happened to me wow i never thought that i would hear that one before but you know what this is a judgment free zone stop the cap <laughs> Anyways, a little background information. I was 16 and in 10th slash 11th grade when all of this happened. But per usual, I am going to rewind to the beginning, all the way back to sixth grade. And this is where I met my best friend who we are going to call Anna. Now, like all usual friendships start out, Anna and I hated each other. Her and I would argue 24 seven, literally over the dumbest shit. Like it was so bad to the point where I could literally never see myself ever being cool with this girl, let alone best friends. Like for example, the one time we got into this really, really bad fight and don't even ask me what it was about to be honest because like I said, her and I literally would fucking argue every day. Anyway, so yeah, like I said, we got into this really bad fight and it was bad enough for her to tell me that she was leaving school for good because of me. And listen, we're in sixth grade, okay? I'm sitting there thinking, okay, whatever, sure, you know, she's bluffing, ha ha ha. It's like whenever you're five and you say that you're gonna run away. So you make a whole dramatic scene, pack all of your stuff, and then when the time comes, to leave you don't actually leave because the whole time you knew that you had no plans of leaving you know there was this one time whenever i was 14 years old and i got pissed off at my dad and i told him that i was gonna run away and he didn't say anything he just walked out of my room and i thought that was the end of the argument you know i obviously had no plans of running away from home well um no that was not the end of the argument because what does my dad do he comes back in my room with a drill and literally screws my window shut like no fucks given at all literally just came in set a nail down used the nail drill thing whatever the fuck it's called and then i got grounded for like a month ah, i love reminiscing about the most absurd moments of my adolescent life anyways let's get back to today's story time this is not about me so yeah you know i just thought she was being over dramatic you know she's gonna walk into school tomorrow and she's gonna be embarrassed for saying that she wasn't coming to school anymore but she in fact was not being over dramatic she actually moved with her dad on the complete other side of town so i didn't see her for a while and honestly i was a little bit shook and quite impressed with her dedication like i really didn't think that our hatred for each other was bad enough to the point where she felt like she had to move to a different school but props to her anyway so yeah like i said she leaves town over dramatic as fuck and you know the year goes on and i meet this guy who we are going to call nick now i had seen nick in the hallways and and we never actually spoke to each other until we had a few classes together fortunately so after i meet nick he introduces me to some of his other friends and one in particularly who we are going to call justin so you know fast forward a little bit through seventh grade which by the way seventh grade was going really well for me like everybody always complains about middle school but personally ranking some of my best years in school seventh grade would probably be at the top of the list mainly because that's when i met my best friends not gonna lie i am one of those people who absolutely hated middle school like i was such a fucking nerd literally all i would do all day is study read books and watch netflix like no social life whatsoever wasn't interested in boys i mean until i met one of my best friends in middle school but even then ew so like i said seventh grade was going pretty well for me and 
I'm really happy that I got introduced to Justin because I kind of had a huge crush on him. Just a little bit. But fast forward, Nick starts to date this girl and her name is Kaiba. Kaiba or Kiba? We're gonna call her Kiba. And Kiba didn't like me. Mainly because I was a girl and I was one of Nick's best friends. Not only that, but I had started to go through puberty pretty early. So my body was maturing faster than a lot of the other girls in middle school. This is like low-key TMI, but did anybody not start their period until high school? Because, yeah, same. Um, anyways, that is a long way of saying that I had bigger boobs than her. But to be honest, I was ugly in middle school. Like, as everyone was starting to have their glow up, I was still waiting for what felt like forever for mine. It's hard waking up every day and still being fucking ugly that shit get old like why my glow keep passing me also i really didn't think that any girls would hate me or really just dislike me in general because even though i had a bunch of guy friends i was friends with almost all the girls as well i'm not gonna lie it's pretty scary how a lot of you are not going through the ugly stage of puberty like my younger sister she's 18 right now when she hit her sophomore year of high school which was two years ago. She literally looked like she was 22 years old. That's older than I am right now. Like, what the fuck? I need to like stop going on rants about my own life and kind of just stick to the story, but... Anyway, so fast forward, eighth grade rolls around and unfortunately I have no classes with Nick and Justin, he's in my homeroom, but still no classes with him either. But my first day back at school, Guess who I see? That's right, I see that Anna decided to come back to school. Her and I made eye contact in the hallway and we didn't say one word to each other, obviously, but it was just super awkward. She honestly looked really lonely, which I'm not surprised though because she had been gone a whole entire year, so all of her old friendships faded and everybody was pretty much already in their little cliques from the year before. So fast forward, it is a month into the new school year. And by the way, this is 2019. But my friend Calvin hit me up and he pretty much was like, hey, do you know Anna? I say, yeah, but her and I don't talk like that. And by the way, Calvin was ugly, okay? But even though I literally told him that her and I don't speak to each other for certain reasons, he was like, well, can you hook me up with her? Like, are you deaf? Now, I don't know if Calvin did this on purpose, okay? But he made it very, 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 very obvious that him and I were talking about her because he kept looking over at her during lunch while we were conversating. And obviously she clearly noticed us, but I decided to play matchmaker and I go over to Anna and I pretty much just ask her if she wants Calvin's Snapchat. She says, yeah. So she comes over to my lunch table, gets his Snapchat, and somehow from that moment on, her and I start to become friends. And her and I both liked pretty much all of the same things. We both watched anime, reality TV shows, we read the same books, we both listened to K-pop, which was rare to find someone with some of these interests in a predominantly black school. So yeah, her and I just clicked. She started dating Calvin for about two weeks. You know how m middle school relationships go. If y'all watched the last story time, thankfully, this was a date slash breakup and then forget about each other type of thing. By the way, can someone tell me what K-pop means down below in the comments? I feel like everybody always asks me if I listen to K-pop, but I'm like, I've never gotten around to looking it up and I'm probably gonna forget after this video. Anyway, so then I convinced her to start hanging out with Nick, Justin, and I. But what I didn't know is that Anna and Nick had been best friends since they were in like third grade. Like not just friends, literally best friends. I even found out that they spent summers together. And since their birthdays are on the same days, they even had birthday parties together. Like apparently their families were really good friends. Now I'm not gonna lie. Did this make me a little bit jealous? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like it really bothered me that she fit in so well with all of us. Side eye. Side eye. Not only did she fit in really well, but I could also tell that there was some mutual flirting going on between Nick and Anna. Now throughout this time, Nick is still dating Kiva, but he ended up breaking up with her because she cheated on him. Well, fast forward, it's about January 2020, and Nick confesses that he has feelings for Anna. So you know me, playing matchmaker again. I ask her if she likes Nick, and her message to me pretty much says that she's always liked Nick since the first day 
that him and her met whenever they were eight years old and she was saving herself for him. Now, I'm guessing that means what we all think it means. Anyways, they were annoyed at me because I pretty much told each other that they liked each other. But to be honest, I really didn't care. I was happy. I was dating Justin and everything was great. So yeah, everything was great. Anna and I are best friends. Nick and Justin are best friends. Like it couldn't have been more perfect. Well, eventually it's March 2020 and all of our lives change for the worst. Eventually virtual school starts along with practicing no contact. Like as if it wasn't hard enough to maintain a relationship in middle school, it was even harder to maintain one online while being in middle school. So eventually Justin and I break up and so did Nick and Anna. But this whole thing led to Anna and I getting even closer than we were before. You know, we were doing hot girl shit on Roblox, Omegle, or even Discord. It was literally the best. Can someone explain to me what this means? I don't know what it means to be doing hot girl shit on Discord, Omegle, and Roblox. Like those are video games, right? You know what, maybe I don't wanna know. Anyways, fast forward to December. Nick and I's mutual friend was throwing a birthday party. So we go and it actually ended up being a lot of fun. And since this was a close friend of ours, me, Nick, and a few other people were allowed to stay over after the party was done. And while everybody else was downstairs cleaning up, Nick and I were left in our friend's bedroom alone. And of course, him and I are wrestling over the PlayStation controller. And eventually he pins me on the ground. Now in this moment, I no longer saw Nick as my friend. For some reason, he was way more attractive than he was before, you know, the last time that I saw him. And I don't even mean physically, okay? Like something just fucked up happened in my brain where yeah all of a sudden I found him attractive. So we're wrestling around a little bit and then we got up, we acted like nothing really happened, but you could definitely feel the tension in the room, that sort of tension. I hate talking about this in story times, like it low-key makes me uncomfortable, uncomfy, like bleh. Anyways, so yeah, instead of me looking at him as my best friend's boyfriend slash ex-boyfriend slash my best friend, I was looking at him as a potential romantic partner. And I don't just mean in a sexual way, I mean in every single way. Like, I no longer wanted this man to be my best friend, I wanted him to be my man. Well, even though 2020 was a shitty year, I personally couldn't have been happier because there were some good things to come of 2020. Like me realizing I had feelings for Nick, that being the only good thing. You know, I just want to put this in here. No, I do not relate exactly to what this girl is saying, but even though 2020 was not a good year, I could not be more thankful because of the opportunities that it brought me. Like I would not have any of you guys if I didn't start making random TikToks one night. So even though it wasn't the best year, I would not change one single thing about it. Not to get all sentimental and shit, but I would just like all of you to know that I'm very thankful for you. All right, enough of that shit. Let's get back to the fucking story. Anyways, like I said, 2020 over, finally. And now we are on to 2021. So Anna and I, like I said, Close as fuck, partner in crime. But things eventually started to fall apart fairly quickly. Like in June, I got a paragraph from her telling me that I was not there for her like I used to be. And she hates that she has to be the one who reaches out to me every single time that we talk. And then she literally blocked me for the rest of the year. Literally just blocked me. Like I don't hear from her or anything. So it was a really hard year for me. Fast forward. I'm in 10th grade now. Anna, she moved over to the wealthier side of town and she was pretty much just busy with her own shit. Well, Nick and I started getting closer, okay? We would occasionally sext. Yes, you heard me. But never anything physical, at least not yet. Him and I FaceTime all the time and I consider him to be my best friend. Even though I wanted it to be more than that, but it wasn't romantic at all, we would have we pretty much were like a friends with benefits kind of thing. Well, fast forward to April. It is Nick and Anna's birthday, but I am celebrating with Nick, of course, because Anna is still not speaking to me. And even though I things to progress between Nick and I, it still hurts that I couldn't be there for Anna's birthday or that she just wasn't around in general. Well, I sent her a birthday text knowing that she was not going to respond and I've low-key been checking up on her this whole time, 
because her and I have a mutual friend who's now her best friend. But you know, I would check up on her and be like, hey, like how's Anna doing? You know, she would tell me how Anna was doing, of course. Anyway, so surprisingly, Anna responds that night and her and I began talking again, which I was super happy about because I missed my best friend. Like what I thought was going to be a five minute conversation eventually turned into a five hour conversation. Now throughout the week, her and I would talk occasionally, but eventually by the second week, it was like her and I never stopped being friends. Like, it literally just felt like we didn't skip a beat. Which I was so happy to have her in my life again, also, because I needed a woman's perspective on things, okay? Sure, Nick and I were best friends, but he was never going to know what it was like to be a woman. Well, fast forward to May, her and I were having a conversation about who we would hook up with and who we wouldn't hook up with and other things in that category. Well then, she says that, oh, like I would definitely sleep with Nick. And I'm like, oh yeah, me too. And she didn't seem weirded out about it, which I was very thankful for. And after being Nick's friend for a while, there were countless times where he had mentioned that he really wanted to sleep with Anna. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't know why I keep fucking doing this to myself, but what do I do? Guess, just guess. Of course, I play matchmaker again. And voila, Nick and Anna are back to talking. Lovely. But I can't even blame anybody. Like, I that ass be doing this shit to myself. And during May, Justin and I also got back together. We ended up sleeping together. I lost my virginity to him. And ever since then, we have been hooking up every single day. And surprisingly, I got to a point where I really wanted the same for Nick and Anna. So that way we can start going on double dates and that sort of stuff because we were all finally 16, we had jobs, we had cars, the world was our oyster. Like it would just be easier for us to do more adult things together, if that makes sense. So Nick eventually told me that he wanted to take things slow with Anna, since she's literally his dream girl, dream girl. And he doesn't wanna screw up with her because Anna doesn't give second chances. Understandable, I guess. But it was like right person, wrong time sort of thing. So Anna gave it another shot. And by the end of May, Justin and I, we split up once again because he said that he needed to focus on school. He wasn't ready to put 100% into our relationship. I don't know about any of you, but I've heard that shit before. But I decided to be supportive. And by supportive, I mean, be a dumb bitch. I told him I completely understand. I'll still be here for you whenever you're ready. Well, now him and I were just hooking up, AKA we were still sleeping together, but without the label of being in a relationship. And it would make me sad because I would see him with a bunch of other girls. Like there was this one and her name was Alyssa. He was literally always with her. Now this led to me being vulnerable, desperate. Oh no, God! So. I do one of the worst things that I could have done and I text Nick. God, please no! And the conversation went from zero to a hundred real quick. At first he was consoling me about the shit that had happened with Justin and then somehow, somehow, the conversation became just a little bit more sexual. Oh my God! Wow! Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And well, um, ever since then, it has been on and popping. Well, then fast forward to Memorial Day weekend. Nick and Anna went on a date to the movies to see Doctor Strange, and they did what they did in the movies. Now, I was jealous, okay? Like, I wanted Nick. I wanted that to be me with Nick. So fast forward to Monday. Him and I are hanging out at the park, and things are getting pretty steamy. And because of Nick and I being sort of intimate in the past, there was a lot of tension. And we were pretty much about to do the nasty, but then Anna, saved by the bell, she FaceTimes us. And you know, we told her, oh yeah, we're just hanging out at the park. And she was like, oh, well, you know, like, I'll be there soon. Yay, Anna, that's amazing. Fucking great. Like, ooh, my. <sighs> Okay, um, yeah, anyways, obviously the rest of the day I am a third wheel and I'm jealous as fuck. But what made me even more jealous though is the fact that instead of them waiting to do the nasty until I left, no, they just go to the car, do the nasty in the car while I'm sitting inside just hanging out. Yay, I love it here. So yeah, I was jealous of course. And I knew that was wrong of me, 
to be jealous, to have any feelings like this whatsoever, and to do the things that I've been doing with Nick because he was my best friend's boyfriend and I was off and on with his best friend, Justin. Well, anyway, so Nick and her are getting closer after not talking since 2021, and me and Justin, we're just getting worse. Like, it's just getting more toxic progressively. I don't even know how, we're not even in a fucking relationship. Like, I spent most of my summer crying over this man who did not want me, only wanted me for, you know, like, intimate reasons. And in the last week of May, Nick and I, we are on FaceTime and we have phone, you know what? We're kind of doing the nasty over the phone. Yeah, great. I mean, this was amazing for me. Obviously I low key felt guilty, but like this is good for me. I don't care. Now obviously I've been wanting to get closer to Nick on all different types of levels, like every single fucking level. But I also felt extremely guilty. So what do I do? I end up confessing to Anna what happened. Yeah, I decided to be a good person, you know? Change of heart. She said it was okay. She was like, it's fine, you know, him and I are only talking. But she ended up saying that if I ever did it again, she would kill me. Understandable. Now, things between Nick and I did slow down until they sped up again. And um, him and I ended up sleeping together. Yeah, I mean, you guys probably saw that coming. We all did. Don't act surprised. Don't act surprised. Don't do it. And then, you know, him and I would fool around with each other, you know a lot but in july this all stopped because nick and anna started dating again and at this point i had kind of gotten the ick from nick now this time around the relationship wasn't as um strong as it was before anna had a lot of insecurities because of me and i felt so bad that i caused her to have these insecurities she was always scared that he would leave her for me but fast forward eventually the new school year starts and we are officially juniors in high school and everything's going okay nick and i had a few classes together justin despised me but that's a whole other story he was dating a girl Alyssa, and that hurt me pretty badly because it's always the ones that they tell you not to worry about like what the f Anyways, fast forward, October rolls around, and I go to text Anna the one day, and all of a sudden, I realize that I am blocked. Yeah, I am blocked. So I go to text her on Instagram, blocked there as well. I was extremely confused. Like, I honestly thought this was a prank, because last time I checked her and I were good, you know? Now, obviously, I text Nick because they're dating, and it turns out that she blocked him on everything as well. And she also sent him a breakup text. That pretty much said, I thought you were the one, but you're just like all those other boys. The only thing that you want is sex and you don't care about anybody else's feelings, but your own. So we're done. Fuck you. Preach. Period, sis. A fucking men. Literally. Well, it's homecoming day and I just brushed this shit off, you know? I knew why she ghosted us. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I don't know. That would be very fake of me. To be honest, I'm just shocked she lasted as long as she did. Like, I do not know how she was able to put up with being my friend after finding out that I slept with her man. So fast forward, Nick and I roll up to homecoming and all of our friends are being super weird. They're not talking to us. Nobody will even come near us. It's like we have fucking Ebola or something and we are getting the dirtiest of dirty looks Like people are literally looking at us like and then all of a sudden Justin storms over He looks extremely pissed off from what I don't know. He literally fucking dumped me like you have a whole ass girlfriend Why are you pressed? Huh? Um, but he ends up punching Nick in the face and he starts beating on him like a punching bag literally blood pouring from Nick's face Eventually the teachers and police officers pull them apart. So like I said, I'm super confused, but our friend Kim comes up to us. And Kim was that friend that's like super innocent. Everybody loves her, you know, like they all want to protect her. Nobody will let anything happen to her. And she says, I can't believe what y'all did. And she didn't say it in a mean way or anything. She genuinely just looked disappointed slash sad. So I'm like, what are you talking about? Obviously kind of knowing what she's talking about not really though because i didn't know that there were any issues um she says something along the lines of have you not checked your phone and i'm like no i have not checked my phone kim anna posted screenshots of you admitting that you slept with nick and as humiliated slash heartbroken slash humiliated slash ashamed of myself i don't know if i said it already but yeah humiliated slash 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 so now i understood why everybody was shunning us 
even though Anna had left school her brother was very popular her older brother so everybody knew her you know from that also she was a cheerleader and Justin was a football player of course so he had even more popularity now these messages consisted of me confessing to everything that Nick and I had done behind her back literally everything like from 2020 to 2022 so eventually i told nick what happened after homecoming him and i had a massive argument because in one of the messages i told her i was only hooking up with nick because he's the only person that i could get so i could see why he could be mad at that a little bit understandable just a little bit a little bit anyways going back to school that week was absolutely horrible no one talked to me i heard everybody talking about me like not even nick wanted to talk to me like instead of just getting over it and like moving on with her life and focusing on her new school anna wanted to fuck up my life even though she was 40 fucking minutes away she's worried about Mwah. that same weekend anna and her sister pulled up to my house to talk and i asked her why she did it knowing why she did it and it seems as if she was reading a script right out of a movie from like mean girls or something like i have never heard anna talk like this ever in my life before she was like you stupid bitch. did you really think that i would let you fuck my man and get away with it especially whenever you were supposed to be my best friend like out of everybody i expected you to be the one person who wouldn't me over so if you're wondering yes i manipulated you and nick and selling me everything that happened so that way i could expose you guys and obviously it worked because you don't have any friends now and not even nick wants you so i'm looking at her with like my jaw dropped to the fucking floor i'm like what the fuck like i knew that she was the type to get her get back but at the same time like i've seen her do it to other girls but i never thought she would do it to me i mean i know i deserved it I know I did. I'm not going to sit here and play like I didn't deserve it. You know, I did fuck her boyfriend. But then, you know, after the whole speech that she gave me, want to know what she did? I'll wait. She just fucking slaps me across the face and then leaves. Like, didn't say one word, just turned around, walked away like nothing ever happened. Well, it is now November and Nick and I are dating. Honestly, it's amazing. It's the best that I've ever felt. And to be honest, yes, I am sad because of the way it happened but i wouldn't change any of it because i'm very happy with him and i haven't told him yet and i don't know if i'm gonna tell him or not to be honest because abortion is legal in my state but i am pregnant okay everybody that is the end of today's story time um babe if i can give you any advice she also wants some advice about this um i always think of it in a way as if they did it to someone else they will do it to you it doesn't matter the circumstances you know, yes, I know people can change, but him and Anna knew each other for a very long time and he supposedly wanted her for so long and look what happened. But for your sake, I do hope that he has changed and I am very happy that you guys are happy together and I hope that everything works out well for you guys. Leave any advice that you have for her down below in the comments, but other than that, if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, maybe hit that subscribe button down below. And if you want to know whenever I post my next video, make sure to click that bell. And if you would like to send in your anonymous story time or you want to know how to send in your anonymous story time, make sure to click the links down below in the description. But without further ado, I will see you guys next Saturday with a new story time.